Did you send me out to look for you? Are the producers here yet? Holden is. Carter will be here later. You want me to take a look at the rehearsal? Not the rehearsal, but cat's fight. What's the trouble this morning? What's the trouble any morning? Beverly? Mm, you look surprised while I say yes. Honestly, what that woman needs is a good split kick in the... Linda! What she does. Smart and Do not talk that way about their boss's wife. Hmm. Where do you suppose Beverly Blake would be if she hadn't married Holden? Oh, well, she's got a pretty good box of it, man. As if any play you wrote needed names. <laughs> Still my honesty to press agent, huh? Loud speaking Linda herself. Well, get the bit of your enemy to Lord. So will I. Maybe she'll get out to mind and stick the knife in her own bag. <laughs> Nothing but a broken down head, and he's ruining all my best scenes. But, Beverly... But nothing. I'm not going to be upstage and miscued by a ham like Dennis. All right, I'll have Chaper speak to him. Chaper, another head, then. It seems to me you could get me a better director than that nervous wreck. After all, I am your wife. Yeah, yes, yeah, of course. Well, perhaps I'll give Bennett the chauffeur part. You'll give Bennett no part in this play. Not if I'm in it. Now, make your choice. Bennett or me. Oh, hello. Oh, morning, hello, Craig. Morning, morning, Mr. Holden. Uh, the wife and I were just discussing Bob Bennett. Yes, I overheard you. I didn't mean to be eavesdropping. Oh, that's but all right. Who else would you suggest for his part? I think Bennett's very good in it. He's capable and well cast. Oh, I know why you're saying that. You know what a hard time he's had, and you want to help him make a comeback. No, no, no. I think... Oh, it's sweet and charming of you, but after all, the good of the play comes first. Doesn't it, dear? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. Well, I'll be getting on stage. I hope you don't find it necessary to replace Bennett, Mr. Holden. Oh. The oftener I see that woman, the better I like rattlesnakes. Hey, Carter. Come on, baby. I brought her along with me this time. You brought who along? The babe I've been telling you about. Louise Delaney and Mrs. Carter. How do you do? How do you do? Him and Holden are going to put your name right up in life, baby. I haven't had a chance to consult my partner yet, but... Uh... Oh, I'll consult him. I'm a pretty good consultant. You know that, don't you? So I've heard. Sure you have. And you've heard how unlucky it is not to play ball with me, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, pal. Let's go and consult Holden. Here you are, dear. Thank you. Edward, please be a bit more careful. I'm sorry. Here you are, sweet. I really don't care who knows. I want to tell everyone that I love you, that I. Silly boy. All right. I'll set up for the disclosure scene. Come on, Bob. You're in this. No, I'm not. Well, of course you are. This is... Schaefer's just given me my notice. Why, I won't, I won't stand for it. I'll... You just leave this to me. What do you mean she isn't the type? I mean, we don't need a girl of her characteristics. I thought you producers were smart guys. Why, you don't even know a good number when you see one. Well, I don't deny that Mr. Lane has a certain amount of charm. Ah, take a good look at this baby. Yeah. Grab a glimmer at those pins. Why, lovely tonsils. Yes, and legs and looks ain't the only thing she's got. She's got brains. Uh, what's that stuff you've been reading, huh? Elocution. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you ought to hear a speak piece. Go on, give them an ear for it. Oh, no, 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 never mind, never mind. I, I might put Bennett in the Catch the Girl Road Company. They're playing San Francisco now. You're such a dear. Beverly, when are you going to tell Ellis about us? I, I can't, not now. If you don't, I will. No, please, Norman, you mustn't. I... Oh, I'll tell him. When? Soon, very soon. Tonight? Impossible, I can. Then I will tomorrow. Miss Sands. Yes? Take Mr. Lane's telephone number. Have any part turns up that she can fill? Nothing doing. I've had that runaround pulled on me before. It's no runaround. Now, listen, I know a runaround when I hear one. Now, get this straight. Either you star, baby... Or I cut myself in on a piece of your show. And maybe a piece of your throat. Now, come on, make up your mind. I think we'd better discuss this in the office. Uh, yes, later. What time? This afternoon? Four o'clock. It's the date. All right, Schaefer. Places, everybody. 
I saw how you smiled at Carter. I saw you touch him. Please, you mustn't be so jealous. I can't help it. I just get furious when... All right, let me pick it up from the line. A man can't be killed by matches. But a man can't be killed by magic. It wasn't magic. Then? It was murder. Planned murder. Diabolically clever, too. But how? Remember? He died here in this chair. Yes? This morning, shortly before light, I slipped downstairs. And I cut the upholstery here. And I found this. A needle? Don't touch it. It's poisonous. The deadliest poison known. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, of all the screwy ways to cool off a guy with a needle in a chair. <laughs> well, I'm a writer, not a murder expert. You better pick yourself one to tip you off. I will. What would you suggest? Well, I don't go into killing guys myself, but I hear things now and then. For example? Well, what's the matter with Plankton? That is hmm? The gag product boys worked out. They rope up a guy so that he, uh, he, uh, hangs himself, kind of. Hangs himself? Yeah. Well, what I mean is, they, uh, they... Oh, wait a minute, I'll show you. Hey, give me a piece of rope. Hey, you come in. You come in. Me? Yes, come in. Oh, yes. Get on the floor. Just stand around. He's supposed to be knocked out, see? Now watch. Now, he's out, unconscious. When he wakes up and tries to stretch his leg, that pulls the loose side around his neck. And he chokes himself to death. Suicide. <laughs> That's a new one on me. Hey, you know, pal, I could be a big help to you. <laughs> hey, you dumb duck, I told you not to stretch your leg. Come on, everybody, please. Let's get on with the rehearsal. Come on, come on. Got your hands up? Right. All right, let's go, please. Wretched your rehearsal? Should be a good performance. I should remember that rehearsal is 10 o'clock, and don't feel late. How about those changes, Greg? Well, I'll take a couple of hours. I'll take them for you. Well, that's a good idea. Go on up the office and do it there. Wait for us. Carl and I are going to cost you. Okay. Good. Who's going to drive me home? Well, uh, may I? Oh, thank you. Good. Bob, did Carter do anything about it? Yes. He promised me a part and catch the girl. <laughs> I have to leave for San Francisco the day after tomorrow. Oh, San Francisco. Oh, I'll miss you, Bob. I'll miss you, too. Well, goodbye, young man. It's been a pleasure to work with you. Thanks. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. I love you, darling. With all my heart, I love you. No, that's no good. It sounded awfully good to me. We'll scratch it out. Can't you hear my heart calling for you? Telling you that I adore you. That's better, isn't it? It still sounds good. <laughs> the trouble is, a fat-headed character like that would probably say, gee, kid, I'm nuts about this. And it would only just as good to her. Oh, no. Women are too romantic. Mm. They take what they can get these days. Type it out. Hello, Greg. Hello. How are you coming with our change? Don't be back in ten minutes or so. But don't leave until we look them over. Say, you spoken to Holden about tearing up that contract of mine? Yes, but I'm afraid he's going to hold you to it, old boy. Sorry. Sorry. That contract is the most unfair thing I've ever seen. Why, they make a mint of money from your place, and what do you get? Two passes for the opening night. If I were you, I'd go to the smartest judge the lawyer I could find. Lawyers cost money. I... Holden Carter Productions. Just a moment. Call to you, Mr. Holden. Go ahead. Now, I know a darn good lawyer. If I gave you his name... I can't afford any long, drawn-out legal battles. If you were free, you could go to Hollywood. Write motion pictures at your own salary. Mm. I've always wanted to go to Hollywood. What? 
Well, there's no law against the right of choosing his own secretary, is there? Be back in an hour, Linda. Yes, Before you go, Mr. Carano, I'll see you later. Stick around my foot. I'll go over to Mr. Holden. Oh, Mr. Holden. Uh, don't be trying to back, Greg. But the changes are all made. I have time now. There goes my app. How about letting me call that lawyer for you? Go ahead. Holden must have forgotten to hang up his phone. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Go ahead, finish the typing. I still don't think this dialogue times for the action. Sure it does. No, it doesn't. Here, read this part with me. At last we are alone. At last. Oh, how I have longed for this moment. That's where he takes her in his arms, isn't it? Uh-huh. Well, he wouldn't have time to cross over to her. Sure he would. Mm. Prove it. It's a change. How I have longed for this moment. Darling. The line is Tony, Tony, my beloved. Mm. It should be darling. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on. I'm getting a kick out of this. He was just trying out a new bit of business. Uh, there's nothing new about that business. Oh, uh, try the bitch got some hair, will you, honey? They're not him. What? Oh, I'm sure they'll be back. Well. I guess I'll go and kill myself sometime. See you later. <laughs> hey, you don't happen to have a bulletproof vest in your pocket. Holden Carter Productions. Oh, hello, Mr. Bennett. No, Mr. Carter hasn't come in yet. Yes? You're at home now. Yes, I'll tell him as soon as I see him. Hello, Linda. Hello, Mr. Caesar. Say, have you, uh, they got those changes ready? They haven't been okayed yet. I'm waiting for Carter and Holden. All right, uh, I'll be back later. And I have a good mind to go. Oh, don't go, please. Well, why not? Well, I don't want to be the only witness on deck when that gangster catches up with Carter and Holden. All right, I'll stick around. Uh, shall we go on with the scene then, from where we were interrupted? No. No, I'm sorry. I have to finish my story. Well, when you've read it? It's a serial. Waiting here. Huh. I suppose that's a new way of saying thanks for waiting. If I were you, I'd go right in there after him. I certainly would give him a good piece of my mind. Oh, what's the use? Ah, about time you should have. I haven't tried to look at them now. But listen here, Thomas. You've got. That 
is the limit. I've written my last place for that fair contract or no contract. Good. Down? No, 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 pal. Are they back yet? Yeah, but they're not seeing anybody. They're too busy. Oh, yeah? Hey, hold it! I'll catch up with them later. Come on, watch me handle the other one. It'll be a pleasure. Hey, honey, tell the boys a couple of junk are here to see him. I'm sure he'll be delighted to guy with a hole like that to his chest ever talks back to an undertaker. Oh. All right, boys. Get to work. Find anything? No, not yet. Let the boys go over that office, too. Come on, Conway. Well, everything you told me seems to check. You think it wouldn't? Why, I'm just a paid policeman, Miss Sands. You see, I have to prove things. Of course, if I were a super detective like Mr. Stone writes in his plays, why, I'd solve this entire crime by noticing the way Smiley passed his eyebrows. And I'd make the police look like a lot of monkeys while I did it. I never tried to belittle the police. Well, you've succeeded quite well without trying. Uh, perhaps you can tell me just what happened here and save me all that trouble. Of course he can. Linda. Why, even a policeman should be able to get the answer to this murder. You know, I'm inclined to agree with you. Trouble between parties. Holden caught Carter emptying the safe. Now it's up to me to catch Holden. What's his home address? It's in the Tottenham Hotel, the Rochester Arms. I know where that is. Oh, Captain. Yes. Can't we go along to help identify Holden for you? Go along? Oh, it would be such wonderful publicity for Mrs. Stone. Noted author helps capture killer. Ah, uh, killer resists capture and shoots noted author in the pen. Oh, uh, we're not afraid. Oh, all right. Come on. Come on, go on. Let me get my hat. Get back, you. Hey, you can't do that for me. I know my rights. Bring Mr. Clark and his rights down to the station. I'll look them both over later. Hold on. Hold on, open that door. I'm certain he's there. I saw him go up, but I didn't see him come down. Give me a pass, please. I'm under a long-term contract to Carter and Holden. I wanted to break it, and they would. Was one of them dead and the other disappeared? He can make a mint of money. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, don't be silly. You don't suppose You certainly had a good motive. I did not. And you're somewhat of an expert on murder, too, aren't you, Mr. Stone? You wouldn't have done me any good to murder Carter. My contract was still about me to hold. Ah. Sure. Only a double killing would have done Mr. Stone any good. Uh-huh. Well, of course, in that case, Come up here, you two. You said only a double murder would help you. That's right. Well, there's the other half of it. Holy! That. Get over there and sit down, you two. What for? 
So I can ask you some questions. Doesn't he just love to play Ask Me Another? Why, uh... Homicide Department. O'Neill calling. Send the unit to the Rochester Round. That's right. How long do you think you'll keep us here? Until this case is solved. Well, if you don't want to stay here all summer, solve it for him. Oh, so you've got the answer already, eh? Why, I never... He worked it all out while you were sniffing for clues. Holden killed Carter. Came here. And overcome by remorse, committed suicide. You see how simple it all is? Why, it's perfect. Except that a man can't tie himself up that way. Hmm. Isn't that just like a policeman? Always privileged. Then will you please be quiet? Well, I'm not going to invest the vouch for your genius. Say, the moment you saw that body in there, you said sad. Now, where did you learn that term? Why? Smiley Clark. Say, you know, I bet he did it. Linda! Yes. Smiley Clark, he showed us that attacking trip this morning at rehearsal. Uh-huh. Well, who is us? Well, there was Carter and Holden. Oh, yes, there was Smiley's girlfriend, uh, Miss Delane. And then there was Lloyd Schaefer, the director of the play. And yet... And yourself. Oh, right? sure. Now, do you think you can pin this on Mr. Oh, Stone? Oh, listen, I'm not even interested in Mr. Stone. But I do have to ask him questions. Now, you can take him away with you right now if you want to. Take him away? Oh, I get it. You're afraid if he stays here, he'll show you up. Well, we're not going. Yes, we are. Now, listen, if you'll drop into my office about 8 o'clock tonight, I'll take your deposition. We'll be there. Well, now, I'll... don't let him put us out. We've as much right here as any. Now, what I want to know is, did you ever kill Hold and know that he had just killed Carter? Did he know? Or didn't he know? What do you think? Well, I think it's already going to Honestly, you're the most disappointing person. Here you have a perfectly good murder mystery dropped right in your lap. And what do you do? I don't want any part of that murder mystery. Don't you realize it's the most wonderful publicity opportunity in the world? I don't want any publicity. But if we're going to go to Hollywood? I don't want to go to Hollywood. What do you want? Got the hot cake. And here I am, doing my best to help you. What do I do? Doing your best to put me on the spot, you mean? Why, Greg. Telling O'Neill that I had the thing all solved. <laughs> Lucky for me, there weren't any newspaper men around. Newspaper men? Yeah. Where are you going? Well, I've got to go and phone Anna until I'll be late getting home. Want Charlie Chelman? Yes. I got a hot tip on the Holden Carter murder. Well, if it isn't the Lord Fortney Lord. So you better blow while the blowing's good. Why, something gonna happen? That place quivering boy friend of yours told O'Neill that I packed Holden. No, he didn't. I was with him all afternoon, so I know. Oh, yeah? Well, I've been in the goldfish room at headquarters for the past hour. O'Neill and a half a dozen cops trying to send a murder rap on me. Somebody's going to pay for that. You fat-headed cluck. Why don't you make O'Neill pay? What do you mean? By really solving those murders and showing him up for a sack. How much is that? Oh, you can. But the one man who can is uh, too naked. I don't get this. Listen. Down. I want to talk to you. A little business proposition, sir. I just came from the hoose out. The cop is getting me working over. Trying to send the Holden murder on me. They're not going to get away with it, see? Oh, of course not. Do you know why they're not going to get away with it? No. Because the real murderer is going to be caught. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you know who's going to catch him? Uh-huh. You are. Me? Mm -hmm. uh, just a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Clark. Oh, hi, Sugar. Uh, pass the button. Thanks. I'm just fixing up a deal here with my pal to solve them killing you. How thrilling. I just know he can do it. I can't do anything of the kind. I'm a writer, not a Hawkshaw. I had a private detective. Oh, you tell me how much help the cops would give any tactic I hired. Well, it won't help me either. I'm one of the suspects. Sure you are. Yeah. That's why I figured you're the guy I want. Right on the inside, in the nose. While you give Greg, if he does start the mystery. Oh, five G's, ten G's, whatever he thinks it's worth. But what he hasn't thought about is what I'll give him if he don't. Huh? So long, pal. Don't forget. 
forget. I'll be counting on you. Good night. Well, my pal, that big black thing in front of you is commonly known as an eight ball. Exactly what did you have to do with all this, huh? Why, Mr. Stone, whatever do you mean? Come on, we've got work to do. Now what? You've got to solve two murders. Else O'Neill will be looking for an answer for yours. Come on. Uh, huh? Things won't come out to you. I don't like the idea of prowling around in here. And we'll be late getting to O'Neill's office. Now, we've almost an hour. Come on. Well, how do we begin? I haven't the faintest idea. I told you I'm no detective. Oh, honestly, sometimes I get so disgusted with you I could. Well, I almost could. We're in the wrong place anyway. We know who killed Carter. The real mystery is who killed Holden. Well, we can practice looking for clues here and go to the apartment later. Oh, yes. Yeah. You have my future all planned, haven't you? Hmm. More than you think. Huh? I wonder why I didn't hear a shot. I don't know. From the size of the wound, Carter must have been shot with a cannon. Well, I'm not hard of hearing. Oh. Well, come along. It's almost 7.30. And... You know, Greg, there's something wrong with this murder. Don't tell me you think murder's wrong. <laughs> From the way you've been behaving, one would think it was just a pleasant way to spend a dull afternoon. Now, seriously, though, there's something about it out of key. It, it doesn't fit in with the rest. I don't know what you're raving about. It's all cut and dried. Holden came in through the reception room, laid low in that office until Carter came in here. Then he came in through that door and blowy blowy, returned to his office and went out through the reception room. That's it. He came in through the reception room and went out through the reception room. Yes. That's exactly what reception rooms are for. But there's a door from Holden's office leading into the corridor. So why should he parade past us both coming in and past me going out? Well, what difference does it make? And another thing, when they left the office, why did they dash out so suddenly? Hmm. I know why Holden beat it. He went to answer that telephone call, remember? Yes, that's right. That accounts for Holden. But why did Carter scram first? Hmm? Oh. Oh, oh, he probably had an uncontrollable desire for a cannibal ice cream sundae. That's right. Get cute. Just when we're on the verge of a discovery. Come on, it's getting late. I've got it. Carter heard that phone call, too, over the extension. His phone was off the hook, remember? Not bad, Miss Bone, not bad. Now, if we only knew what that phone call could have been. Uh, suppose we let O'Neill find that out, shall we? Uh, speaking of O'Neill, if we don't get to his office, he'll have the reserves out looking for us. I didn't want to come here, but she insisted... Mr. Stone is working out the correct solution of this mystery in his own way. He came here looking for evidence and clues. You're kind of a big boy to be playing cops and robbers, aren't you? Hmm, by the way, just what are you doing here? Oh, I'm paid for it. A sheer waste of taxpayers' money. Probably. So let's get down to the station before we waste too much. Come on. Mr. Stone has five jumps ahead of the police already. I'll do anything to help. <laughs> Greg doesn't need any help. Has Mr. Stone found out anything definite? Well, of course. Oodles of things. Well, I... I guess that's that. Thank you very much, Mr. Stone. I can go now? Oh, I, of course. Run along. Thanks. Here's the preliminary on holding. Oh, thanks. Oh, Stone. Yeah? Uh, wait a minute, will you? Have Miss Sands and Mr. Clark come in here. Miss Sands? Miss Clark? Have you got it all figured out Quiet. yet? Quiet. Now, you've each told me individually 
that you saw Holden is approximately 4.40 when he left the office after killing Carter. Now, is that correct? Of course. Right, on a level. Where were you between 2 and 3 o'clock? Why, I was in the reception office. Dictating to me. Smiley, how about you? A couple of guys get smudged at 4.40 and we've got to give alibis for 2 and 3. Where were you? I was at a movie watching Shirley Temple. Well, I was. I get a bang out of that kid. And you're all convinced that Holden killed Carter? Well... Sure. Yeah. Well, that's the first time I ever knew a corpse to commit murder. Corpse? What do you mean? Well, here's the coroner's preliminary report. It is the opinion of the examiner that the deceased met death between 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Impossible. But we all saw him. Of course we did. Then one of three things is true. Either the coroner's mistaken or Holden's corpse killed Carter or else you're the three biggest liars in the city. Why, oh, I should. Oh, thanks for the lift and good night. Oh, wait a minute. I'm coming with you. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, but I want to help solve this mystery. I'm fed up with a mystery. I'm going to bed. Just a minute, pal. Are you throwing me down? Say, be reasonable, will you? How can you expect me to solve a mystery that has the entire homicide squad biting its nails? If they can't crack it... Now, th what have the police got that you haven't got? Everything. A complete set of reports on the whole case, for example. You mean those papers O'Neill kept looking at? Sure. If you had that stuff, could you work out the answers? But I haven't got it, so I'm not going to try. Oh, so you're just going to sit back and let O'Neill have all the glory. Exactly. But, Greg, don't... Will you get this through your head? I'm going upstairs. I'm going to have a nice hot bath. I'm going to get into bed. I'm going to sleep. And I'm not going to wake up until O'Neill has this whole thing solved. So good night and goodbye. Oh, pa dee dee did you hear the music going round? The shamrock here. Oh, Hashi. I wish you'd either quit trying to sing or get yourself tuned. Get in tune. <laughs> Very too good joke, Mr. Stark. Uh, what, uh, half past seven? Not quite. Good. Oh, hey, 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 what are you trying to do? Parboil me? Oh, no, you bet. Oh, Mr. Stone? Yes? Uh, I'm just thinking, uh, you're not needing of me tonight some more? Maybe not, please? And why are you two thinking that? Oh, thank you. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Where are you going? Oh, to see my girlfriend, Miss uh, Mary Tomawatimi, with kind permission. Uh, tonight, uh, she day of she birth. I promise I come help with a happy cake candle. You allow? Yes? <laughs> yes, 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 I allow. Oh, joyful thank you. Hashi! 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 Oh, hello. Oh, Mrs. John, I must speak to you. I'm very sorry, but I'm just at the moment... terribly mo important. Night. That isn't getting over with me. I know how little you care for your husband. Oh, I'm not crying about Ellis. Gregory, you must tell me. Who killed Norman Carter? Ah, so the morning's all for Carter, is it? Of course. Tell me, who was it who murdered him? I haven't the vaguest idea. Oh, I know better than that. But you are trying to solve the case. Linda said you were. Linda is a one-woman misinformation bureau. I might be able to help you. I tell you, I don't want help. I'm not interested in the murder mystery. All I want is a nice hot bath and get to bed. And Alice then... has always been terribly jealous of me. Mrs. Holden, I am not in the least interested. 
But just today, he accused me of having an affair with Lloyd Schaefer. Schaefer? Yes. It would be utterly absurd to anyone but Ellis. But after all, Schaefer knows how powerful Ellis was in theatrical circles. Uh, well, I hate to appear rude, but if you But years ago, I was playing opposite a well-known actor. Ellis grew jealous of him and smashed his whole career. And Schaefer knows all about that. May I suggest that you tell all this to Lieutenant O'Neill and leave me alone? Please, if you don't mind. Hello. Oh, hello. You're just in time to take Mrs. Holden home. I just saw this in Sherwin's column, and I want to tell you... If it's anything about the murder, nothing doing. Why don't you listen to him, Mr. Stone? After all, if you could solve them... Oh! Listen, will you both promise to get out of here if I let you have your say? Yes, of course. I only want to help. All right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. Come along now. Let's have it. Well, I... I don't know whether this has anything to do with the affair. When Schaefer gave him my notice today, he said, Don't feel too badly, Bob. I'll be directing for a new set of producers before long, and I won't forget you. Hmm. Hmm. And what is so suspicious about that? Why, Schaefer was tied to both Carter and Holden under a long-term contract. The same as you are. Oh. And you think you committed murder to break the contract? Of course, I'm not sure, but... Mm, you think that I didn't? I had the same motive. I wouldn't think of accusing you. That's very sweet of you. But now it's getting very late, and I'm very tired. So, if you please. Good evening. Oh, I'm so glad you're glad to see me. I brought your present. Well, go trade it for one-way ticket someplace, will you? Why, Mr. Stone, what a clever remark. Good evening, Stay. Good evening, Mr. Bennett. After all the things I've done for you, Mrs. Stone, you might at least invite me to your party. This is a party, isn't it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's a going-away party. Mm-hmm. So go away, will you? All three of you! Isn't he witty? I wonder if all authors are like that. This is going too far! Come on! All three of you! Uh, isn't that cute? Uh, look at all the hoop nannies. How about mixing you folks a drink? Go ahead. Amuse yourself. Have a good time. Do anything you want to. Invite all your friends over. I'm going to take a bath and get to bed. Say, have you seen this in the paper here? Yes, I know, I know, I know. The paper's all wrong. I'm not trying to solve any murders. I'm not even interested in them, so good night. Listen, why don't you go to work at this thing and try to figure it out? The police are quite able to take No, they're it. not, because the police don't know the truth. The facts have all been twisted around. But they even think that I have something to do with it. Oh, Neil's a capable man. He's not going to see an innocent person suffer. No, but there's something at the theater today. A quarrel between Holden and his wife. Go ahead, and Mr. Schaefer. Tell him the rest. I didn't know you were here. Obviously. Go on, tell him why we were quarreling. Well, I... We I, were quarreling because Ellis accused me of having an affair with this man. That isn't true. It is true. True or not true, my lack of interest is simply colossal. So if you'll all clear out, I'll... Yes, there's something else. What? When I was checking the pops after the rehearsal, that revolver the Forrest used was missing. You mean that blank cartridge pistol? Yes, and a box of blanks. Now, listen, Lloyd, why don't you go home and get some sleep? You're all upset, and if you... Oh, now, don't try to be funny, Stone. I don't know what connection a missing blank cartridge revolver could have with the crime, but I am interested in seeing the murderer captured. Why are you so interested? Well, because I'm under suspicion, thanks to you and your lying tongue. You told O'Neill that I hated your husband, and you let Ellis believe I was in love with you so he wouldn't suspect Carter. I'm not going to take the rap for a double-passing little social... Hey, 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 hey! This party's getting awfully dull. How about playing a game of Monopoly or something? Goody, goody, goody. More company. Oh, this is delightful. Come right in. That's right. Thank you. Say, I don't understand this. You know what I want. Do you hand them over or do I have to find them? <laughs> and what do you mean by them? All right, all right, if you want to be dumb. Conway, yes, hold headquarters and have them send a matron down here right away to search that woman. Mate, you and Terry, take the men in the bedroom and shake them down. Come on. Now listen, you'd only tell me exactly... Not a thing, Lieutenant. 
And you found nothing on the men, eh? No. You want to talk, or do you want me to take this place apart? If I only knew what you were looking for. Okay. Get busy, boys. Start in on this room here. Come on, huh? Come on. All right, boys. Bedroom next. Mind handing me a dry towel? But don't forget that someday, someday I. Oh, come on. Want to make this an all-night party? Of course, the place is a little upset, well, we'll but... Go, of course. Yes, good night. Good night. Well, I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Stone. Don't mention it. Don't mention it. I'm glad to have you here. Good night. Good night. I've been sitting on for the last 45 minutes. Sitting on? Why? To keep it under water, darling. Go on, open it. Hmm? Huh? What's this? That's what Neil was searching for, the report on the two murders. Where did you get them from? I thought he had two of his boys borrow them for you. What? You mean they stole these right for police headquarters? Well, of course. You said you needed them. So I sort of suggested the idea to Smiley, and, well, oh. there they are. I wish I could trade you in on a nightmare. Oh, Greggy, I bet you say that to all the girls. What are you going to do? O'Neill. Greg. You're, you're not going to have to put me in jail. For life, if I'm lucky. Hello. Oh. Give me spring. Six. Oh, you're just plain horrid. And after all the trouble I've gone to for your sake. Oh. Hmm? No, come oh. along, come along, come along. That's not going to get you anything. Oh. Go ahead. Get your clothes on and go home. My clothes. They're all wet. I saw that woman put them in the tub. Oh, well, go in and see if they're dry and hurry. All right. Hey. Are they damp? Yeah, hey, come along, come along, come along, bring them in here. Come on now, go ahead, hang them up there. Here you are, here you are, here you are. Discover anything? Wasn't trying to discover anything. I was just curious to see how these reports were made out. Did they give us the mention? I seem to be suspect number one. You? Oh, look at this. Isn't it ghastly? Set down, you bloodthirsty redhead. Uh, Carter. Oh, that room was made by no ordinary bullet. Must have been a dum-dum. Hmm, this is funny. What? 
The autopsy says the fatal bullet passed clear through the body, but they couldn't find a slug. That is strange. Well, maybe it got stuck in the wall or something. Oh, no, it didn't. Just looking at this cross sketch and the note made by the officer in charge. Oh, how cute. No mention of any slug here, see? Oh, they must have overlooked it. Oh, no. Those boys don't miss anything. Look at the details in these notes. Cigarette ashes on the carpet. Blood stains on the rug. Dried ink on the floor. Oh, I spoke that last week. Burnt matches in the ashtray. And half a cup of water on Holden's desk. What's that? Hmm? Uh-oh. Fingerprints, probably. Look up 37 in there. 37. Smear. Sample at lab. Lab? Oh, I expect your lab report. Yeah, yes, it is. 37? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, what? Tetralatum, with pigmentation traces. What's tetralatum? Soon find out. Tetrolatum, a basic chemical compound, markedly oleaginous, used extensively in the manufacture of salves, cosmetics, and ointments. Hmm. Obviously, Holden had just shaken hands with the manufacturing chemist. Holden couldn't have had the grease on his hands. We saw him open other doors, and there's no notation of any grease marks on them. Let's see what they've got on Holden's murder. Oh, let's find out. Possible. What is? According to this, Holden was killed by Carter. I told you the police would ball everything up unless you stepped in. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but Carter's fingerprints were all over the place, even on Holden's collar. Hmm. The autopsy showed fibers on Carter's hands, fibers from the curtain cord that Holden was stacked with. And here's that coroner's report, stating positively that Holden was killed before three o'clock. Oh, the whole thing's screwy. I'm getting so mixed up. I'm beginning to believe that maybe I committed the murders myself. Carter kills Holden at 2.30. Then the corpse gets up, walks half the way across town, leaves grease marks without any grease, shoots Carter without any bullets, returns home without being seen, ties himself up in a way that he couldn't have done, and then waits for the police. What do you make of that madhouse? Holy cat smoke! and see what beautiful deliciousness of female garment I got in. I'll wait. Oh, those papers do you any good? Sat up most of the night looking them over. And? I'm in a worse muddle than before. Got any suspects? At the moment, everybody who had motivation, access, and the temperament to commit murder. Meaning? Lots of people had access to Holden. The door of his office and the back entrance to his apartment were both unlocked. About half New York had sufficient motive you know, theatrical producers make many enemies. And then Holden was married to a very beautiful woman. Jealousy may have entered into this. We know that Carter was in love with her. Forrest, too. Probably a score of others. Why, only yesterday, he accused her of having an affair with Schaefer. Of course, Schaefer denies it. You didn't expect him to admit it, did you? Hardly. Who else? Hmm? Who else? Well, there's Beverly herself. Well, I don't see how. And you. 
Now look here, wise guy. If you think I had anything to do with that killing... I don't know if you did or if you didn't. I just told you I didn't. Yes. Emphatically, everybody else kept me up most of the night trying to tell me the same thing. Hatchy, hatchy, hatchy. Yes, sir. I'm here. Start talking. Yes, we are. Wait. Come on, downstairs entrance. What? Speaking at Mr. Crack. Oh. Marley. Yeah? Bring it up. All right. I always let the boys know where I'm going, you know, just in case. Hmm. Don't miss a bed, do you? Not me. I had the boys trail all the people mixed up in this thing since last night. Now, I suggested oh, that. <laughs> you very pretty, miss. Just like fashionable prey. Oh, thank you, Hashi. And I owe it all to you. I bend my neck with three thanks to you. Did you see? No more cracks. You hurt his feelings. trying to climb a plane to Los Angeles. What's the meaning of this? I demand to know I've been manhandled like this. I'll get the police. Shut up. You're back at this, you and your wild desire for publicity, you. I said shut up. That's better. Now go on, tell us why you were in such a hurry to scram out of town. Come on, spit it while you've got a chance. Okay, boys. Put him in the trunk and drop it in the river. Don't let him do it. Don't let him do it. I'll talk. I'll talk. Well, go ahead, talk. I wasn't trying to escape. I'm not guilty. Honest, I didn't kill those men. You're running away. With her. I was going away with her. You are going away with who? Beverly. She phoned me last night. Late last night. She was crying. She said she couldn't stand the questioning and the browbeating any longer. And that she wanted to get out of town until it was all over. She asked you to go with her? Yes. She told me to get a ticket and be on the early plane for the West Coast. That she'd be on it, too. Lying. You killed those two people. No, no, I, I didn't do it. I was only trying to help her. I guess he's on the level. He hasn't the nerve to bump anybody off. Uh, you're going to behave? You know what's going to happen if you talk too much? Well, go on, beat it. Hey, where do you think you're going? Out. Out where? Things are getting a little dull here. I'm going to the Putnam Library. Library? That's right. Will you come back at noon and eat me? No. I'm going to be there all day, and I don't want to be disturbed. Well. Hey, what bit you? Got an idea. Where are you going? Home and get rid of this masquerade costume. And then? Down to the theater to see who shows up for rehearsal. What? Here's Miss Sand. Maybe she knows something about it. Why is Beverly doing your thing for me? This is my contract. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, please. Now, I don't know whether the play is going to open or close any more than you do. Is it true that Mr. Stone knows who killed poor Mr. Holden and Mr. Carter? Yes, it is. Well, who did you know? Please, please, please. Mr. Stone is keeping all his information to himself. He hasn't told the police whom he suspects. He hasn't even told me. Why hasn't he told the police? Because he wanted to make sure of certain facts. I'm to meet him at the Putman Library at 3 o'clock to help him. And he really will have it solved then? At 3.30, he will be in O'Neill's office giving him the whole lowdown. Yes, but what are we doing? That'll be all, everybody. You can go home now. And I'll let you know if we start rehearsals again. Oh, Miss Sand. Yes, what is it? May I see you a minute? You're going to see Mr. Stone. Yes. There's something I want you to tell him. It's about Forrest. Last night he kept phoning me. He wanted me to leave town with him. I wouldn't, of course. Of course. This morning he came to bring me here, and well, I'm afraid he's losing his mind, and I'm, I'm terribly frightened. You will tell Mr. Stone. Mm -hmm. I most certainly will. Thank you.
Stay where you are, pal. Linda, what kind of game do you think you're playing? I'm disguised. Whew. Pretty good, eh? What have you been eating, Limburger? No, garlic. It's part of the disguise. Keeps people from getting too close to me. I want to get you deported. Hey, I've got some information for you. Yeah, well, mail it to me. But listen, Greg, it's about Beverly. Yes, Not I know, I know, I know. She told you her only possible alibi. Denied calling Forrest. Said that he'd phoned her. Who told you? Nobody told me. I guess that would be her next move. Oh. Then you think she murdered those two men? I'm not certain about that, but I know she was a motivating force. Hey, take a look at that. What is it? That? It's a report of a suicide in Hungary about a year ago. A man killed himself with water. Drowned himself? Do you mind breathing through your nose? No, he didn't drown himself. He shot himself. Shot himself with water? Well, that's impossible. Nevertheless, it happened. There's a history of the case. What is more, the wound was identical with that of Carter's. But how? Say, you remember in that police report about that half cupful of water on Holden's desk? Yes. Don't say yes. Just nod your head. Well, the murderer took the blank cartridge pistol, poured water down the barrel, then pressed the muzzle against Carter's side. That's why you never heard any shot. He must have been goofy. He wasn't goofy. He was very smart. He knew that any bullet can be traced to the gun from which it's fired, and he wanted the police to assume that Carter had been shot with Holden's gun. Oh, then you think it was somebody other than Holden that killed Carter. That's right. But we saw Holden go in the office and come out. Ah, did we? Of course we did. Yes? All right. Read that. Set to later. Base used for stage makeup. Is mm. everything set? Everything. What is everything set? Oh, nothing. Who is that man? Oh, just a chap I happen to know. But, hey, hey, what have you got in that bag? A horseshoe? Oh, of course not. Why should I carry a horseshoe in my purse of all the ridiculous ideas? What's the cannon for? Well, now, however did that get in there? Linda. Well, as you must know, I brought it along to help protect you. Protect me? <laughs> I'm not in any danger. Oh, yes, you are. The murderer's about to kill you. Any minute now. <laughs> Kidding, aren't you? No, I'm not. <laughs> See, I arranged it, sort of. You arranged to have me murdered? Oh, no. Only to have the murderer try to kill you. But don't worry. The police are here. Where? Everywhere. I got an idea. I told the suspects that you knew which one was guilty and that you'd be here at 3 o'clock. But you wouldn't tell O'Neill who it was until 3.30. Oh, <laughs> thereby giving the murderer ample time to assassinate me before I get to O'Neill. Exactly. Then I arranged with O'Neill to have his men here. But I made him promise that when the murderer was caught, he would give you all the credit. Oh, how sweet of you. I suppose you'll have it nicely engraved on my tombstone. Oh, oh. oh Greg, don't go, please. Look for a Hey, listen, do you think I'm going to stay here to be live bait for some crazy... Oh! <laughs> Get the others and surround the building. Oh. oh, Lieutenant, Mr. Stone saved my life. Yes, I didn't have time to think. Well, is either one of you hurt? I'm not. Nor I, thanks to Mr. Stone's help. Mr. Sands, please. Well, come on, you two. Where are we going? To headquarters. I'm going to lock you up or you'll be safe. <laughs> hey, Sergeant, you think you'll get that guy? Oh, oh, there he is. It's falling. Stop me. Carry him, Lieutenant. What does this mean? Why is this officer arresting me? So you don't know, eh? Of course not. I was on my way to meet you when he grabbed me. Meet me? What? Why, yes. One of your men phoned me a half an hour ago and said you wanted to see me here at 3 o'clock. Let go of me, you big stiff. Hey, what kind of a gag is this, anyway? Well, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? Coming down to see you like I was told. Look, here's another one. I knew I had a telephone call. Oh, what's the hurry? I'll have your bags for this. You wait and see. Miss Blake. Just hurry. Oh, yeah. I suppose you all had a telephone call telling you to meet me here at 3 o'clock, eh? Well, of course you know, we I know I here if this man had to me. All right, all right. What do you make out of this? <laughs> it's obvious. The murderer of him. What for? Well, had he been successful in killing me, anyone here present could have been suspected. I believe that's it to kill us right here in this bunch and there's nothing we can do about it. All right, boys. Frisk them. And if they're clean, let them go. Right, hey, take your hands over my pocket. 
You're down, pal, before you were grooving that rug. The fine mess your brainstorm got me into. I didn't go outside my apartment for fear somebody would take a butt shot at me. Well, it seemed like a good idea. You can get off that spot any time you want to, you know. Uh-huh. You simply catch the murderer and your worries are over. Yeah, nothing to it. Oh, no, just a simple little thing like that. From the way you talked to the library, I thought you knew who did it. I think I know how it was done. But O'Neill would never believe it. Mm, say the word and I'll have the boys make them believe it. Huh? Anything you want, just name it. Of course, I could go to O'Neill and tell him what I know, but... Oh, no. He wouldn't believe it. It's too fantastic. That's just what the murderer counted on. What do you mean? Oh, say. Are you and your boys going to take a long chance? He's taken plenty before. Okay. Come along, Linda. We're going to work. What are you going to do? What am I going to do? <laughs> I'm going to write the script for a real murder mystery. And you're going to supply the cast and the audience. Come on. Now then, we open up. Come on, buddy. That door hinges upstage. Yeah. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. So you're throwing this party, eh? Yeah, in a way. Well, I don't want to surprise you, but they passed a law against kidnapping. Oh, I know, but you see, I'm trying to solve two murders. Yeah? With everything but a brass band, eh? Yes. Now, if you kindly take a seat in the audience, these gentlemen will show you the way. Thank you. Come along, boys. Come on, Matthew. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, good evening. Oh, what's the matter? Aren't you in this show? What does this outrage mean? Why have they brought us here? No one will tell me a thing. You know as much about it as I do. All right, Mr. Stone. We're ready to go. Okay, give him the house. All Linda. right. Linda, Linda. Come on. Come on, boys. Face it. Well, looks like the show's going to begin. Now, this is absurd. It's utterly ridiculous. The show must be insane. Well, maybe we all are. Right uh, down. You have been brought here to witness the reenactment of what occurred yesterday afternoon. I've reconstructed the happenings partly from what I know and partly from what I have been able to deduce. All right, boys. Mr. Sherwood will take the part of Mr. Holden. Mr. Lonsdale will portray Mr. Carter and Mr. Johnson, the murderer. But this is a farce. He can't force us to... And she says, can't you hear my heart calling to you, telling you that I adore you? Yeah, and that's that. Go ahead, type it out. Well, hello. How are the changes coming? They'll be ready in a few minutes. Don't leave until I look at them. I want to see them, too. <clears throat> yes? Thank you. Holden speaking. Do you want the lowdown on that wife of yours? Who are you? Never mind that. Just meet me at your apartment and I'll tell you enough about her and her boyfriend to curl your hair. Uh, I'll be there as soon as I can. Tell Smiley Clark it's time. Yes, sir. Get ready. The man who made that phone call had no intention of meeting Holden. He merely wanted to get him out of the office so that he, the murderer, could kill Carter. But the ruse failed because Carter overheard this and rushed to the apartment to get there first and silence the person he thought was going to betray him. What happened at the apartment is obvious. Carter and Holden met, fought, and Holden was killed. Carter sacked his victim to throw the suspicion upon Smiley. Then he returned to the office to take all the valuables out of the safe. But the murderer, waiting for Carter, got there first. To show you what happened after that. That's a nice job of reconstruction. Why, it's preposterous. Absolutely. Here we are again. I'm sick and tired of waiting. We'll be back soon. 
Oh, Mr. Holden, about those chains. Well, later. But I've been waiting here since two o'clock. By the time we were getting back, those changes are ready. I haven't time now. the one weak link in your reasoning. You knew Holden, and no man impersonating him could fool you. Nevertheless, there is a man who did. Who? Oh. A man who was madly in love with Beverly Drake. A man whose career Holden once smashed. A man whom she goaded into killing Carter in such a way that her husband would be blamed, thereby freeing her from both men. It isn't true. You're making it up, all of it. You know it's true. It isn't. It isn't. Look. Look at that stage. it all out. Oh, I didn't. I didn't. It was his idea. Whose idea? Bennett. Bennett killed him. Bennett? Certainly. Light. Okay, Smiley. Where do you turn out the lights? Switches back of you. One move and I'll kill this man. Thanks, Hill. Nice work, Craig. Well, everything forgiven? Why, of course. I never really did suspect you. You didn't? Certainly not. I figured if I worried you enough, you'd solve the whole mystery and save me the trouble. Goodbye. <laughs> well, put it here, pal. You know I'm going to back your next show. Oh, no, you don't owe me anything. Now, listen. My door is on the line for anything this little lady is interested in. That means you, I guess. So long, pal. <laughs> uh -huh. Say, do you realize that you saved my life? You bet I do. And do you know that I owe you something? Uh-huh. Well, what would you like? You don't know? Mm -hmm. After all the love scenes you've written? Love scenes? Oh, Greg, you chump, don't you understand that I've what got... Hey, what's the idea? Greg, yes. here I am. I know you want... Oh. 